I want to free your mind. It won't take you that long when you get to know me to find out my all-time favorite movie is The Matrix, the original Matrix. And there's a scene in there where Morpheus is trying to, to get Neo to literally jump over buildings. And he's like, look, I'm, I'm trying to free your mind. Gravity is a rule that, that can be kind of bent in this, in this place, right? And that's what I want to do with the net box. I want to, I want to kind of free your mind. You've seen the structures, right? You've seen, hang on, let, let me jump, jump right here. Uh, you've seen that the site is the core, right? You've seen that we can then take sites and group them into regions, and we can even group regions of regions, and we can split a site up with multiple tenants, but what you haven't seen is like, okay, well, give me some examples of, of where that might be possible. Absolutely. When you're using Netbox, I would say from a region perspective, there's two primary perspectives that you can usually take. One is what I would call the managed service provider model. Now, managed service providers are a fairly new thing, about 10 years old. They're, they're essentially an organization that does outsourced IT or technology services, right? So, so instead of Hiring people that have that expertise, they, a company might say, hey, you be my IT provider, right, to this managed service provider. So you have an organization that might be using Netbox that has many different clients within it. So instead of the region being a ge geographical area, you could set up the region to be your customers. So the top level region might be Stanley Spas right? One customer of the MSP. The second level region might be Zap hand sanitizer. We're in the, we're in the middle of COVID uh, right now. So, so everything's sanitizer, right? So it may be a growing company, obviously Zap. And then, you know, next customer, next customer, next customer. Those can be your top level regions. And then underneath that, you can either break it into sub regions. Like let's say Stanley Spas has, you know, three offices in Phoenix and two offices in Tucson, right? So you could create a sub region for Tucson and Phoenix, and then put your sites in underneath there. Or if, if Stanley Spas is like, Hey, we, we do, you know, one office per location. You could just make this the site right? You don't have to make that a subregion. And it's the same thing with Zap Hand Sanitizer, right? You got your, your locations, which could be subregions, and you could even divide those further into sub-subregions, sub right? Or they could be the individual sites. The other model could be an enterprise model. So let's just say instead of it being an MSP, we now have global education, the, the worldwide provider of education services, right? And they have offices in, and that now we're at regions a little more like it sounds, North America and Australia with kangaroos and Sydney and Newcastle happen to be sub-regions of that. And then maybe the individual sites and, the, and again, same thing as the MSP model, these could be sites or they could be sub-regions, I'll just put SR, um, and then you, you, you could even break it down further, sub-sub-regions. Sub you can nest regions within regions within regions, and that can be a model that you can use for uh, the regions. Now, that is usually pretty logical. It makes sense. Where people struggle is with the tenants, and, and it, rightly so. Regions can only contain other regions or sites, right? Tenants can contain all kinds of stuff, racks, virtual machines, servers. Where might you, we, use, we use that? All kinds of places. Take a look at this. Um, and let me get my, my pen off of there and, and clear off my, my dots. Uh, you might use uh, tenants to organize your cabinets. Let's just say that, that um, we've got... Uh, uh, wrong color pen. Uh, we've got um, uh, a big, a big office space. We're running a data center, right? And it, within within this uh, this data center, we have multiple cabinets, and and we we then do co-location to where we've got you know uh, customer one buys the cabinet, customer two buys this cabinet. So you have multiple customers with different with different cabinets. So this would be the the site. Excuse me. Let, let, let me just use. Uh, uh, we have a data center out here in Arizona called Iron Mountain Data Center. It used to be called IO Data Data Center until they sold it. So, so Iron Mountain might be the site. And then within there, you divide up that site with tenants and you, you divide each one of those tenants into, and assign them a cabinet. Because again, let, let, me, let me make sure that, that um, you catch this. Hang on, let me clear this off and jump over here to Netbox. Uh, you can see that, that we have our sites, everything orbits around the site. 
you can subdivide the site with tenants, which it says are customers or departments. Again, it's the model that you're using. Regions, you can only get to right here. It's not on the, on the homepage, right? So, so when you think about that, you could be thinking like an MSP model. You could do that. Uh, or you could do you know, departments within your business. Accounting has all this equipment. But look at this. When I, when I click on the, the tenants, uh, if I can get that loaded up, there we go. And I click on add, you notice, I mean, let's just... ASDF. Let me just add uh, add one right here. You notice that the tenant can contain sites and racks and rack reservations and devices. So it's again a way of of subdividing that. You, when you see things like sites, it's like okay, that could mean a, a lot of different things. Prefixes. These are IP address uh, schemes. VLANs. You can use tenants to divide a lot more granular stuff than you can a region. So you could use it again to come back here to divide up your cabinets or maybe rack space. So so for instance, our data center here in Arizona, you can't you can't buy anything smaller than a 42U cabinet, you know, a full full length cabinet. But a lot of times you'll get you'll get uh, providers that come in buy the cabinet and then they reach out to customers who maybe wouldn't be able to afford a cabinet or don't need a cabinet and they're like, "Hey, we'll sell space by the U, you know, by 1U, 2U, 3U, however much you you need." And they provide their value added services and things like that. That would be great for them to use uh, the tenant to divide up their rack space so they can have, you know, uh, 1U through, let's just say 5U goes to customer X, you know, 6U, you get, get the idea, right? So you can assign each one of these and then use NetBox to generate easy reports to where you say, okay, billing time, end of the month, let me generate a report out of NetBox and, and here's exactly what you're paying for customer X. Here's what you're paying for customer Y to, to divide up that rack space. You can use it to divide up rooms and buildings. You can use it to divide up a server. So you can have VMs assigned to a specific tenant. So again, <laughs> how granular do you want to go? Cabinet level, dividing up a rack. Do you want to divide up a server inside of that rack and, and use like, you know, AWS or Azure hosting models to, to say, okay, that VM costs you X amount a month uh, or do you just want to use it to divide, divide up office space is that is this gelling a little bit right is it, you kind of see in the model for this so here's here's what I want you to do because again hearing it is one thing doing it is quite another I want you to draw out a region slash tenant model for your organization and I want you to implement that in NetBox. Literally, go in, and I know you're probably you might be like, well, you know, I got it. No, I I want you to do it because it's not until you actually engage with NetBox and start click. Oh, okay, and you add a few things based on a, a design that you draw out on paper that it really starts to stick with you. Otherwise, it's just terms that just cycle around your head, right? Draw it out, build it in NetBox, and now it sticks. It's that simple.